So, Seattle City Council, they're floating the idea to use public libraries as an emergency homeless shelter. My first thought was, why don't we turn Climate Pledge Arena into Homeless Pledge Arena? And Homelessness Pledge Arena. And Crime Pledge Arena. There's a lot of pledge arenas I could come up with. We're not doing any of that. Somehow, we decided Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle was the way to go. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah, emergency <laughs> emergency use of public libraries. Uh-huh. That's what we're doing here in Seattle. Things have gotten so bad that folks are like, okay, now we got so many people. We don't want them dying out in the streets. This is basically for when things are super cold or you had the coronavirus. All right. Yeah. All these public buildings are closed down. We got to have somewhere for them to go because we're not going to actually solve the homelessness issue. We're just going to try and put them somewhere. We're not going to work on their their addiction issues or maybe their mental health care issues. We're just going to corral them up in these buildings. And for now, let's go with the public library because, you know, get a book and then experience. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into this one. This is, I mean, this has got to be just some genius stuff, right? Yeah, I know. I agree. Just like climate pledgery. It just kills me to say that. There's a concert coming up. The tickets are going to go on sale for tomorrow. I think it's in September. They're booking these shows way far out in advance, right? And I understand you got a tour in Seattle is upper, you know, left USA. It's the, it's, at, it's either at the beginning of every tour or at the very tail end when they're all worn out and drugged out and, you know, they can't hardly sing. Yeah, that's what Seattle gets. Either the beginning where they haven't quite got it all together, haven't worked out the kinks. But, um, yeah, Jane's Addiction is going to be opening up for the Smashing Pumpkins. I know you know both of those bands and you're intimately familiar with them. Probably not, but I'm a huge Jane's Addiction fan, Perry Farrell. Yep, it's going to be good. But uh, Climate Pledge Arena, and it kills me that I'm buying tickets for something as ridiculously named as that. It's so unnecessary. The Seattle City Council has expressed interest in using a public library building as an emergency homeless shelter. The idea was proposed Wednesday when newly appointed Seattle Chief Librarian Tom Fay provided an operations overview to the council. I would love to sit on one of these. Uh, these meetings aren't in person anyway. They're still, city council is still doing these remote things. Ah, oh, we're afraid. We're afraid. Council member Lisa Herbold directed a line of inquiry at Fay to determine the library's position on using its space for emergency shelter capacity. Yeah, let's just have it at the library. Kids go down there. Little kids go down there, you know, get some books out and experience what real life is all about. Now, if you don't go to school, you're going to end up like that. Uh, there might be some lessons in there, but those lessons wouldn't override the fact that there is a massive safety issue with this. Uh, this is what we're working with in Seattle, though. This is what we're working with. Good stuff, folks. Does your plan consider the possibility of opening as a shelter? Not using your staff, but using staff who are able to serve folks staying in a shelter? Herbold asked. What? I'm not really sure. Herbold clarified that the process would be structured similarly to how Seattle City Hall was used during the pandemic as a congregate shelter when the building was otherwise not in use. The Salvation Army staffed City Hall in 2020 with 70 to 80 shelter beds on the lower levels of the building. Council member Herbold further explained that the shelter would only be open when the libraries do not have sufficient staff for traditional use, such as in the event of a winter storm. All right, you want to get people out. Don't you have a bigger facility than just a public library or city hall? Don't you have a bigger facility? Don't you have something lined up for this? I mean, isn't there like, you know, I you know, city planning 101. Yeah, how how do we get to 2022 and we don't have this down? Hey, let's use the library. This nothing could possibly go wrong there. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. 
In that event, I'm talking about a big storm, she speculated that it would be possible to have nonprofit staff run the building as a congregate shelter. You can kind of see, you know, dealing with this, you can kind of see what we're working with here in Seattle. We're not, some would say that there are folks in our leadership that are otherwise lacking leadership skills. The answer to that particular question is a no in the sense of if you're going to have a building open, there's an expectation of the public that library services would be offered from that building. Faye replied, saying, no, no, we're going to, we're going to, you know, short term rent out books. We're not doing that other thing. That is something that our staff are skilled and able to do, renting out books. And that is why we would not generally consider that during our operations, handling the homeless population overrun. Hmm. Trying to maintain full services obviously requires skilled librarians to maintain building operations. They've got a book game that they have to deal with. I mean, they got to take care of these books. They can't be concerned with the homeless population. We got Climate Pledge Arena working on the Climate Pledge Arena, Climate Pledge. Not homelessness, not the fentanyl overdose, not the crime wave hitting Seattle, Climate Pledge. So that's the kind of, that's the direction that we're headed in here. Can you tell I'm just, I'm, I'm just annoyed at some of the things going on. A lot of people say, well, then you should leave. I know, but I've got so much content here to podcast on, right? Yeah, that's what we're doing. I would say many of our buildings would not lend themselves to that just due to the sheer size. You can't fit a lot of homeless folks into most small libraries is what they're saying. Most of them are fairly small and don't have open spaces that would really accommodate that. I know that the shelter space down at City Hall is fairly large and wide open. That is not something that we've considered at this point. <laughs> when, when I think of that, I think of when uh, Shama Sawant uh, had all of the mostly peaceful protesters that you know caused all the damage in Seattle during the race riots. Um, she opened up City Hall to um, you know just anybody that was out peacefully protesting at like ten thirty at night into City Hall just to you know you know really get some camaraderie going, and that was one of the things that she was being. Um, uh, people had a major issue with, along with marching on the mayor's house. But yeah, all those things, they're fair game, it appears like, in uh, 2020 or 2021. And yeah, Faye added that libraries appearing to be open, but also being in use as a shelter space could beca a, become a point of confusion for the public. Huh, do you think? Again, I go back to, oh, I thought we we're going to get books here. I thought we we're going to, you know, continue our learning. Mm, this doesn't this doesn't look like a, a learning experience type space. This doesn't seem to be inclusive to opening up books and, and learning. There's a lot of there's a lot of other stuff going on here. I, I think we're just gonna I think we're just gonna go on to the next library. I don't know. What do you even do? That would be more problematic for us as they would have expectations of library services that would not be able to be offered is what the executive in the library division is saying. Yeah, you got expectations. You come in here to get a book. Sorry, folks. No can do. We've got homelessness overrun population here today. You're going to have to go learn somewhere else. I get it. I mean, you, you need a place so people don't die out on the streets. The public library? Are you going to close down the public library? I mean, kids got to... Is nowhere safe? Is nowhere safe? Apparently not. I mean, we've proven that in Seattle by having homeless encampments next to our schools. I mean, here in Bellevue and here in Redmond and here in Kirkland, King County, the county we're in, is buying up old hotels. And sometimes they're 100 feet away from a daycare. And they're buying them up for transitional housing. And they just don't think much of it. I'm sure it'll be fine. You mix little kids around, you know, people that might have mental issues that have a known criminal record. <laughs> you know, you got stuff like that going on all the time. They tell you that, no, oh, no, we're not having any level two sex offenders in here. Level one, you know, whatever it is, least, least dangerous, least likely to do something crazy to a kid. Yeah, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. 
So to me, you know, why wouldn't they consider the library system? During the early days of the pandemic, Seattle Public Library saw the urgent need of people who rely on public restrooms, many of which were shut down. All right, I get that one. So these people have to go somewhere, okay? I mean, they do. I mean, how many thousand people do we have on the streets of Seattle? Okay, they've got to go somewhere to the bathroom. That's a, I mean, this is literally what we're facing because we created this situation. Leadership created this situation. They just did. They made it so conducive to for the homeless population to just kind of do their thing. And I'm not talking about people who are really struggling to get back on their feet. I'm talking about the ongoing population that chooses it as a lifestyle, a free lifestyle, because it's free adult and it's what you're doing. It's what we're doing. So now we're going to have that population housed at the public library so our kids can't learn there. But don't worry, it's only for emergency use. And the library guy is saying, yeah, I, I, I think they have expectations of books here. And if we have homeless overrun, then those expectations, we may not be able to meet those. Hmm, you think? They responded by partially opening five buildings so that people could use bathrooms, even though library services were not available, she continued. Libraries are city-owned. We need them to be a flexible spirit to the table during severe weather emergencies. Uh, okay. The libraries? Okay. All right. I, this seems to be the road we're going down. It's the path we're doing. Staffing constraints led to some library closures during our most recent storm. When these closures happen during life-threatening events, why can't some libraries operate as daytime warming centers staffed with non-library workers? These are people that just don't run a business. They literally don't run a business. They just come up with these ideas, they throw them out there, and then all of their cohorts are like, ah, that's a good idea, let's do that one. Uh, nothing could go wrong here. And then, you know, something just something horrific happens and we're, and everybody's like, didn't see that one coming. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Shocking that that happened. So, I mean, you can imagine, I mean, you can imagine how this would go. You've got a big, long winter storm, whatever things happen seven days you know, over a course of like a seven day period. That's how these storms normally go. You open up the libraries. I mean, it's not going to go well. Now you, you've got to have, dedicated spaces for dedicated uses. And if you have overflow, I say climate pledge arena. Yeah, that's like a what 25,000 person capacity stadium. Put them there. That's I mean, there's some good city tax dollars that went there. Climate pledge arena. Push them there. Not our libraries, not where our kids go to get books. Hard no go on that one. But this is something that they're floating right now. I mean, sh I'm sure they're going to float a lot of other ideas. But um, yeah, we have we have interesting leadership here in Seattle. And what's crazy is people actually vote these folks into office. I, I always find it shocking. It's like you voted that person. What is wrong with you? Well, this is just kind of what we're doing. And if you drive around the st streets of a lot of these neighborhoods in Seattle, you kind of get an idea of, oh, okay, this is where these people are coming from. I'm going to go back to whatever suburb I need to. <laughs> That's what people do. Now, some people love the whole Seattle thing. Ah, it's it's diverse. We got a lot going on. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff to do. And then you got new stories like this where um, you know, we just have just these concepts that are thrown out and you're like, "What a terrible idea. That's just not a good idea. You should have something else already on the books, but we don't because it's free adult. All right. That's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk again. Bye for now.